and everywhere but to the cross. But I'm glad tonight that that cross is still real. It still paid the price for my sin. And I tonight am saved, and I'm saved to the uttermost. If you have your Bibles, if you'd turn with me to the 38th chapter of the book of Isaiah. The Lord began to deal with my heart, and I, I want to share with you tonight on the thoughts that He placed in my mind and in my heart. Beginning with the first verse, and most people that's been in church any amount of time at all have read this scripture or these scriptures. The Bible says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. The Bible goes on to say, Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Whew. You talk about a message. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And you can go on down through there and read a little more if you want to. But I, 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 as I read these verses and the Lord began to deal with my heart, I want to preach to you tonight on the very subject, I have heard thy prayer. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? Let's pray. We're going to ask Almighty God to help us tonight if he would. Father, Again, tonight, we are so thankful for this opportunity to be in your house and to worship you. Father, I thank you for your spirit that I've already felt here tonight. Lord, if I could walk out of this church right now, I'd walk out refreshed and renewed and lifted up. But Lord, I know there's even more things you have for us. And Father, I ask you right now to stretch forth your hand and to anoint me and cause me to be able to say exactly the words that need to be said tonight. Lord, as you've laid on my heart, I ask, Lord, that you would use me and that you would cause me tonight Lord, uh, to be the instrument you'd have me to be. Open every heart, every ear tonight to receive that each and every one of us, Lord, can be drawn closer to you. For we ask this tonight in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said tonight, amen and amen. I am thankful tonight that I am serving a God who is not so busy that he doesn't know what's going on in my life. I was thinking this afternoon about the service tonight and the Lord began to deal with my heart the story of Hezekiah as I turned over to it and began to read down through here and, and I thought you know what it doesn't matter what's going on in your life prayer still changes everything and as I began to read down through here I thought you know what uh, there's times in our lives that we look at situations or we look at circumstances uh, and all we can see is what is happening right that very moment in our life. Let me tell you what. Uh, how would you like tonight uh, to be as Hezekiah was where the Bible says he was sick unto death? And that's bad enough right there, but then the prophet of the Lord come in to you and tell you to get your house in order. You're going to die. You're not going to live. Now you talk about some dire news that you get. Uh, Knowing that you're sick anyway, but then come in. Let me tell you what. How many times uh, has a doctor come in and told somebody uh, that, you know what, uh, there's no hope. There's nothing else we can do. Uh, tonight, uh, that uh, there, there's no more medical advances that we can do on you. There's no more procedures we can, uh, can have in your life. Uh, get ready to die. I remember Brother Larry England telling the story uh, of a few years ago when he was sick that they called the family in several times to him, uh, said he's not going to live through uh, 
what he's going through right now. But my, my Lord and my God, by his grace, by his mercy, he's sitting here tonight. Uh, and I thought it's no different uh, now as it was when Hezekiah uh, turned his face to the wall and began to cry unto his God. Uh, but the Lord began to deal with my heart some things that Hezekiah did. Uh, and I thought, you know what? We got the right to do that tonight. First of all, uh, when the things happened that he didn't like and he didn't like the news that he got, uh, he knew he had to go to the God that he served and that God would be able to take care of it. Uh, but what I liked more than this was this. Uh, Brother Tracy, not only did he turn his face to the wall, uh, but he began to remind God of how faithful he had been to God. Uh, and he began to remind God, I've walked in truth. Uh, I walked in the righteousness. Uh, I've learned, lived for you. I've served you. Uh, he said, I've done that which is right in your eyes. Uh, and I think tonight as a Christian, we have the right uh, to remind God of the fact, uh, Lord, I've served you for many years. I've done uh, what you've had me to do. Uh, I've lived the way you've wanted me to live. Uh, and when we can say that, folks, uh, we can stand up in full assurance of our faith and know uh, that God is faithful in his word uh, to perform that which he said he would do. Uh, and you say, well, God's mind can never be changed. Uh, let me tell you what. Uh, Hezekiah changed God's mind with his prayer. Uh, it is never final until it's final. Uh, and God can take the very impossible uh, if we will put our faith uh, and our prayer uh, to action uh, and begin to pray uh, and believe God uh, without wavering, without doubting, uh, without in any way, shape, or form wondering whether or not God can do it. Uh, let me tell you what, to not waver uh, means that no matter what anybody else says, you're still believing, you're still trusting, uh, you're still accepting. Uh, if everybody around you says it's not going to happen, uh, you still know in your heart and in your life that God's going to do it. Uh, if the doctors tells you there's no more hope, uh, you still know that there's a God who's still a healer, huh? that's still a deliverer. Huh? If everybody tells you huh, this is impossible, you know a God huh, that takes the impossible and brings it to pass. Huh? And I ask, absolutely believe in my heart tonight huh, and in my life that there is not one thing that God can't do. Huh? There is not one situation that God can't change. Huh? We've seen miracles in this church. Huh? We've seen God perform healings in this church. Huh? We've seen God deliver huh, folks in this church. Huh? You say, will win. Uh, look around you uh, at the people tonight uh, that are here that ought to be dead. Uh, but God saved them. Uh, and God lifted them up. And God healed them. Uh, think of our family members. Uh, and and I, I remind you again uh, of Brother Larry and Sister Phyllis's uh, little great granddaughter uh, that could very easily be dead tonight uh, instead of having 115 uh, stitches on her face because of a dog attack. Uh, I want you to understand uh, God is the final say in everything. Thing, huh? But I'm telling you, your prayer and your faith uh, can turn uh, and cause God to do something differently than what he was going to do. I don't believe that, you say. Well, what about Hezekiah? Isaiah came in and but he said, you are going to die. You think that's, that's enough? Then he went on to put an exclamation point on it. And he says, you will not live. Get your house in order. You're going to die. You're not going to live. Now, I'm going to tell you what. It's bad enough to be told that once, to be, be told it in essence three different ways, three different times. Uh, get ready. You're going to die. Uh, and Hezekiah had to make a choice. And I want you to know, uh, don't think tonight that God still doesn't answer prayer because God still answers prayer tonight. Uh, he had to make a choice. I'm either going to accept uh, what the world uh, is bringing at me or accept the situation in my life, uh, accept the circumstance in my life, accept all these things, uh, or I am going to pray to a God uh, who can change anything and everything, uh, and with full faith, uh, I'm going to believe that God's going to do it. Uh, I want you to understand tonight, uh, if Hezekiah would have doubted, uh, if he would have wavered, uh, if he had not believed, uh, he would have died exactly when Isaiah said, you're going to die. Uh, but because he had faith uh, in a God that was greater than the situation he was in, uh, because he had faith and believed God, uh, I'm telling you, God added to him another 15 years. Uh, and he turned uh, and he changed the mind of God uh, with a prayer of faith. What that should do is give unto you tonight a hope, a greater hope. 
that even when everything else is finalized and done, God still can change it. Does anybody but dad believe that? How many of you have had a circumstance in your life that you thought was absolutely done and over with, and then God turned around and he, and he changed the whole thing? Oh, look at the hands in this place. God changed the situation. It may have looked like it was over, it was said, it was done, uh, but yet God still changed that situation. Uh, I want you to know, uh, prayer will change anything and everything if we believe. Uh, and I want you to understand tonight as a child of God uh, that if we as his children uh, will begin to take the things that he has given unto us uh, and the abilities that God has given us and apply them to our lives, uh, I want you to know uh, that we uh, don't have to worry about how big or how hard the situation is. Uh, we don't have to worry about what circumstance says uh, or what circumstance begins to tell us. Uh, we know that God is able. Uh, the Bible says uh, that then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah go and say to Hezekiah thus saith the Lord the God of David thy father I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Two things Hezekiah had to do. First of all he had to humble himself before the, the face and the hand of God. And he had to realize with faith that God can do it. Can I say something to you tonight? I don't think it's wrong for us to remind God of the things that we've done that are right. I was reading this morning again. You say, well, what about the things that we've done that's wrong? God don't know about them because if you've asked him to forgive you, He's already cast them as far as the east is from the west. Listen to me. People struggle with this. They struggle with the fact that when I mess up or when you mess up or when somebody messes up, that when we pray that God forgets it. Let me tell you what. God forgets it and he never remembers it again. So you don't have to remind God of the things that you've done, the mistakes, but it's good to stand up and remind God, hey, God, uh, hey, it's me, it's Rick Stewart. Uh, I've served you for a lot of years. Uh, I've been faithful to you uh, when everybody else uh, said it's not worth it. Uh, I went to your house. I worshiped you. I praised you. Uh, I, I, I've supported the ministries of the church. Uh, I was faithful in my tithing and my offering. I was faithful in my prayer life. Uh, God, I just want you to know uh, it's me and I've got a need, uh, and I need you to move on my situation uh, and begin to humble yourself and realize uh, you know what God can take all things and he can turn it around uh, and when we begin to understand that begin to realize uh, there is nothing said and done uh, that God don't know about uh, and there is nothing final uh, until uh, we take that last breath uh, out of our body uh, and we go on to spend eternity with him uh, until that time prayer can change any situation in your life uh, as it did for Hezekiah uh, he had to make a choice. Uh, I'm either going to believe God or I'm going to die. He chose to believe God. Now, I thought maybe you might get a little excited about this tonight, but y'all act like you'd rather be home. Are you listening tonight? I'm telling you about the greatness of God. About how prayer will change any circumstance, any situation. But you can't waver in your faith. Well, God doesn't answer my prayer. Then maybe your faith ain't where it needs to be. The prayer of faith. The Bible says, well, number one, save the sick. The prayer of faith will move the mountain out of where it is and put it over here where you want it to go. The prayer of faith. The Bible says, without wavering, we'll move the hand of God. Now, I'm going to say something here that probably somebody in their mind's thinking right now. Well, how do I believe and not waver?
When you are in the midst of a battle, when you're in the midst of an affliction, when you are in the midst of a need, you have got to come to the knowledge that your God is bigger than where you are right now. And until you do, you'll never believe God will pull you out of that. Let me ask you something tonight. Brother Ed, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was told you're either going to bow down or you're going to be cast in the fiery furnace. You say, they weren't told that. Yes, they were. The decree went out that at a certain time when you heard the music, you had to bow down and you had to worship the, the idol that was built. And you had to do that right then. And the ones that did not were supposed to be cast in the fiery furnace to be burned up because of their disobedience. They had to make a choice. Uh, when it was time, uh, they, they had to make a choice. Okay, we're either going to bow down and we're going to live or we're going to trust God to bring us through. And they said this, O king, we know that our God is able. <laughs> said, we know it. And we know that he can take care of us in this fiery furnace. But even if he doesn't, we will not bend, we will not bow, and we will not serve your God. The Bible says that the visage of that king was so great against them that he said, I want you to heat that furnace seven times hotter than it's ever been. And I want you to cast them in there. Uh, now I'm going to tell you what. Uh, I don't believe for a moment that they had to drag them kicking and screaming to that fiery furnace. Uh, they had said, uh, we know our God is able. Uh, and with that assurance, uh, I don't think they had to drag them and throw them. Uh, I think they walked to that furnace. Uh, and even though the men around them, let me tell you what. Uh, if the men around them were killed uh, when they got close, uh, they didn't have to go on in there. But I believe they walked in to that fiery furnace furnace uh, and they walked in there knowing uh, that God had heard their prayer uh, as Hezekiah knew uh, that God had heard his prayer uh, and they went in there uh, and not one flame uh, not one uh, uh, coal uh, had any harm on them uh, when they came out there wasn't a hair singed on their body uh, their clothes were not singed uh, then when's the last time you got close to a fire uh, and folks uh, if you got close and it was that hot uh, that it didn't send something or didn't burn something Huh? or didn't do something to you huh? when was the last time you got near a fire and didn't smell like smoke when you came away from it huh? folks I don't believe they smelled like smoke huh? they weren't singed huh? their very bonds were still upon them huh? and I'm telling you what huh? that fire should have taken all that out and gotten, and gotten rid of all that huh? should have killed them instantly huh? but because they had faith in God huh? God brought them the deliverance that they needed huh? and he lifted them up huh? and that old king looked in there and he said hey uh, we cast three men in there right uh, how come I see four uh, because Shadrach Meshach and Abednego's uh, redeemer had walked in that fire with them uh, and taken care of them uh, so where you are uh, what you're going through right now uh, as impossible uh, as everybody is telling you it is uh, I'm telling you without any out uh, of doubt in my mind tonight uh, that there is nothing you're facing that your God is not bigger than uh, there is no affliction in your body that your God can't heal. Uh, there is no need that you're facing that God can't meet. Uh, there is no uh, circumstance in your life uh, that God can't take care of. Uh, I want you to know right now, uh, if you'll pray uh, and believe in faith, uh, that God will hear your prayer uh, and he will bring you uh, the deliverance, uh, the answer, uh, the help that you need in your time of trouble. I believe well, that's okay because you don't have what I'm facing. How do you know what people are facing? You have no idea how many people have going through the hardest battles of their life right now. I'm going to tell you, we've got people sitting here on Sunday morning uh, that are going through some of the hardest battles they've ever had to go through in their life, uh, but yet they've chosen to come to church uh, and to believe God and accept God. Uh, and I'm telling you, every chance they get, they're lifting up their hand uh, that we're believing God, we're trusting Why do you do that? Uh, I want people to come to this assurance uh, and come to this knowledge uh, that God is bigger and greater than everything. Uh, and He'll take care of you if you allow Him to. 
to. Oh, I wish this was for me. Let me tell you what. Paul said this, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. It's no different for the Jew than it is for the Gentile. It's no different for the ugly as it is for the pretty. It's no different for the skinny as it is for the fat. It's no different for the rich as it is for the poor. God is faithful to who? Whosoever will. Whosoever will call upon him. I'm telling you, remind God of what you've done. Remind him of your faithfulness. Remind him of the good things in your life that you have done and lived for him. And then let God begin to move in your life. You say, well, there's no Isaiah around to come and tell me. I'm going to tell you what. God has sent his spirit down to you and let you know exactly that I'm here. I'm ready. And I'm willing to work in your life. I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. I've given unto you the deliverance that you needed. Well, I don't need 15 more years in my life. That's okay. You may need to be healed. You may need a need met. You may need a circumstance taken care of. Whatever it is, God is able to do that if you allow him to do it. The key word is you have to allow God to do it. You ever tried to help somebody didn't want help? I run across it all the time. God is looking down. And I mentioned this verse this morning. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. How many of you are saved tonight? If you're saved, you best be walking uprightly. Because if you're not walking uprightly, guess what? Huh? You just said that. Oh, how dare you say that I ain't saved and I ain't walking uprightly. Let me tell you what. Bitter and sweet will not come out of the same well. You're either saved or you're not. There's no in-between ground. There's no middle ground. There's no gray area. It's black or white. You're saved. You're not. When you stand before the Lord one of these days, as all of us will, not just you, not just me, but every creature, every, every human being is going to stand before the Lord, and they're going to give account, and he's going to look at them, and he's going to say this, okay, your name is either written in the Lamb's Book of Life, or it's not. If it's written there, that means you're walking the way you should. You're living for him. You're born again. He said, enter in, thou good and faithful servant, into everlasting life. If your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, He's going to look at you and he's going to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity, for I knew you not. Most people stop right there, but I want to remind people what the rest of it says. He said, they said this, but Lord, did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not do this? Did we not do that? He said, I never knew you. I've said this, and I'm going to say this one more time. For everything real, there's a counterfeit. There are a lot of people been led astray because of the signs and wonders that the enemy has brought forth instead of God. I'm going to tell on Susie. We were talking this evening about the visitors are coming into this church. How, how many of you are noticing? Service after service after service, visitors are coming in this church, and they are being touched. How many of you are noticing that? Just me? Susie said, I didn't believe it would happen. I said, Susie, didn't I tell you what the Lord showed me? I didn't believe you. Now, she believes it now. But I'll tell you why she struggled with believing it before. Sometimes we can't get past what we see right now. And there for a while, it looked like, whew, man, we're in a struggle here. But I'm going to tell you what, just hold on a little bit longer. As the song said, help us on the way. Now she sees that God is performing exactly 
what he showed me he was going to do. I'm going to tell you what. There are people here in this church right now that are going to go to heaven and spend eternity with the Lord that six months ago would not have. Because of the graciousness of God. Not because of you, not because of me, but because of the mercies of God. And I'm thankful for that tonight. Uh, so, folks, uh, when I stand up here and tell you uh, that God is going to do something, bring your faith alive and let God do it. Quit looking at the circumstance. Quit looking at the situation. There's an old song, God, any river. You think are uncrossable. God, any mountains you cannot go through. God specializes in things that are impossible. And he will do what no other power can do you talk about a truth that is a truth in a song folks hezekiah turned his face to the wall he prayed and he cried unto god and god sent the prophet back to him and said uh, i heard your prayer i saw your tears uh, i have given unto you what you've asked uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm ready for God to do that in your life and mine. How about you? Uh, I'm ready for God to send the word to us and say, you know what? Uh, and I believe he's doing it tonight. Uh, I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. Uh, I've heard your cry. Uh, and I'm answering it tonight, and I'm giving unto you the hope uh, and the help that you need. Uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, folks, hold on. Uh, we're going to see people say that people have given up on years ago. Uh, there's going to be folks come in and give their heart and life to the Lord uh, that people said they'll never go to church. They'll never serve God. Yes, they will. Uh, not because of you, not because of me, but because of the grace of God uh, that reaches down into the depths of wherever they are and lifts them up. Uh, we don't know what it's going to take. We don't know whether it's kids that are going to bring them in, uh, whether it's teenagers that's going to bring them in. We know this. Uh, God will perform that that he said he would do if we allow him to. In closing tonight, musicians, if you would, make your way to the front. I remember back several years ago when my mom had been diagnosed with breast cancer. And Sister Brenda, I had absolute assurance in my heart that she was going to be okay. Never doubted that. My dad struggled with it a little bit. And I said, Dad, where's your faith? He said, but it's different when you're in it. And I said, no, it's not. It's the same God. Whether you're in it, whether I'm in it, whether Barbara's in it or Sheila or Pat or Rod, it doesn't matter who's in it. It's the same God. And he finally came to that knowledge when all of a sudden my mom got a clean bill of health and has every doctor's appointment since had assurance when my dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer Tracy I had an assurance in my heart he was going to be okay he went in had the surgery said they're doing great went back for follow up said we found cancer somewhere else Jerry I still had assurance in my heart that God was going to take care of him. Now, I'm going to tell you what. This man went through prostate cancer and kidney cancer within a three-month period, came out of it, never had to take the first radiation treatment, never had to take the first chemotherapy treatment. Now, that's a big God. Let me tell you what. The doctor told him, said, your form of prostate cancer is the most aggressive form 
you can have. We got to get rid of this thing. In a matter of one month or two months, between the time they took his prostate out, they found a tumor on his kidney the size of an orange in one month to two month period, Brother Tracy. They had done scans before that. They had done everything they could do, and it was not there. And in that amount of time, a tumor had grown from nothing to the size of an orange in a month to two month period. I'm going to tell you what. God had this thing under control. And he brought deliverance to this man. Why? Because he is a faithful God. He is a true God tonight. So I don't know where you are right now in your situation, but I know this. You have to get past being in the middle of it and see the God that is in charge of it. Would you stand tonight? God, any rivers you think are uncrossable. God, any mountains you cannot go through. God specializes in things that are impossible. And He will do what no other power can do. Would you bow your heads tonight? I want to ask you a question. Now, those of you that know me know I never preach a message because I know what somebody's going through. I always preach what God lays on my heart. So tonight, if this word has touched your heart, don't sit there and think, well, he knew what I was going through, so he just preached it because he wanted me to get up. No, I preached it because God laid it on my heart, which tells me God's trying to talk to you and trying to get you through what you're going through right now. Would you say, Pastor, I've listened, I've heard, and now I'm going to believe, and I'm going to get past the situation I'm in, and I'm going to let God take control. I've turned my back, uh, my face to the wall, and I'm praying right now, knowing that God is going to send deliverance. Would you slip your hand up real quick? Thank you for the, my goodness, hands all over this church. I'm going to believe God, and I'm going to accept tonight that God's delivering power is greater than anything else in my life. Let me say, folks, Prayer really changes every situation. And I want us to start tonight with prayer. Would you step out of your seat? Come to this altar, especially if you raised your hand. If you can't get to the altar, would you find you a place at your seat to pray and begin to do as Hezekiah did? Remind God of the things that you've done and say, Lord, I'm putting my trust and faith in you. Would you come all across this building right now Find you a place to pray tonight if you would. Uh, and take your positions before the Lord uh, and let Him work. He will do what no other power can do.
to the old rugged cross. Just keep holding on, holding on. I'm holding to the old rugged cross. I'll just keep holding on, holding Just keep holding on. I'm holding on. I'm holding to the old rugged cross. I'll just keep holding on. I'm holding. I thank God tonight for mercy, for grace, and for His Word. How about you? I pray tonight, and please don't think for a moment that I don't understand that problems sometimes get hard, but we've got to learn to see past the problem to the solution, and that solution is still our personal relationship with Jesus Christ and the power that He gives unto us. Excuse me. Don't forget, we have church Wednesday night, 